Hello lovely, lovely Year 11s. Your, your GCSE so far have been pretty disrupted. And, you know, at the moment, things are normal-ish, mostly, kind of. Which means I'm now like 99.9% .9 sure we are having exams. You guys are having exams. Um, however, you have had a lot of disruption and the general consensus around teachers is that the year 11s that they're teaching are not really where they should be for this time of year. So what can we do about it? So mock season is coming up. It's different in every school, but they generally start after half term November time and run through to January. So some of you will have them for Christmas, some of you will have them after Christmas. I can never decide whether it's nice to give you Christmas to revise for your mocks or to do them before your Christmas so you don't have to revise over Christmas. I can't really decide where the nice thing is there. Um, now I know that the mocks may seem scary and horrible and it's like teachers just giving you a load of work to do but mocks are actually really really important for seeing where the gaps are. So if there's a particular question that you do in your mock, in your prelim that you just don't know then please see it as a good thing because it's telling you you need to go and revise that topic and this is one of the ways that we can deal with the disruption of last year and this is one of the ways that we can help you catch up by working out which bits you don't know so that we have time to focus on them before your real exams start in May, June time. So I know that the mocks may seem horrible and it may seem scary um, and you're probably not very sure what's going to happen but these are useful things for you, not just for the teachers. Now, you can kind of expect to have, I would say, more mocks than normal, or more mocks than you would have had if we hadn't have had a pandemic. Because teachers are just ensuring that if they do need to go to centre assess grades, again, at very, very short notice, that they have the evidence already in place. So I would probably expect you to have an early mock in maybe November and then another mock in the new year, so maybe like February, March time. Um, school, lots of schools I'm seeing are changing around to doing that. So if you do have your mocks early, then kind of expect to have another one at a later date. And what we should be seeing in between those two mock exams and then in between the mock exams and the real exams is that you found where the gaps in your knowledge are, you filled in the gaps in your knowledge and you've got a better grade. That is literally the whole point of doing mock exams, to find out which bits you need to know. It's not just so that teachers can see whether you're on track, so they can grade, decide whether you to enter for you for higher or foundation. Um, lots of things come out of mocks, not just grades. So in preparation for mocks coming up over half term, I would like you to do a little bit of organising and work and stuff. I'm not asking you to do loads and loads of revision. That's ne not necessarily going to be the best use of your half term because I do want you to relax, have a lot of time off your half term. But I'd like you to spend maybe 15, 20 minutes, half an hour per subject, depending on how big the subject is, like how demanding the subject is and really sort out your stuff. So I'm going to strongly suggest that you get beautifully labelled folders for each subject and um, in the first thing that needs to go into these folders are a set of knowledge checklists. Now for loads of subjects, mainly science and maths, but it's like history and geography, if you sign up to my mailing list then you can download these knowledge checklists for free and they will literally take you through every single thing you need to know then if you've got time and again this is like really low impact really low pressure revision sit there with an honest checklist and the whole topic videos watch the whole topic videos and tick and cross the bits as we go through so if a topic comes up on the whole topic videos that i've made you 
and you're really really happy with it you're really really confident with it then you know colour in the smiley face if it comes up and you've literally got no idea what I'm talking about find that bit in the knowledge checklist and then colour in the kind of like little sad face and then you know that's one of the bits that you need to go and fill in your gap for. Now you can see that from your revision guide or from one of my videos. Um, but go and watch those videos and fill in that gap. And then we're kind of like getting a head start on the mocks. So I'm not asking you to do loads of practice papers. I'm not asking you to do loads and loads of notes after half term. We don't want to start doing those things too early. Because if we do start doing those things too early. Then you are going to be burnt out by the time we get around to actual exams. So what I'm asking you to do is kind of like timey. Like it will take up time. But it's not huge pressure revision. So really, really low stakes work here. Stuff that, you know, will take time, but you don't actually have to do too much thinking. You don't actually have to do too much writing. But it is really, really, really valuable thing for you to do. And then once you've done that, once you've watched all the videos, got the checklist, beautifully organised your folders, um, sorted out which bits you do know and which bits you don't know, another really, really great way to start preparing in a really, really low pressure, really, really low stakes way is by doing loads and loads of multiple choice questions or retrieval questions. These are generally like one or two mark questions like, where are protons? Um, but that kind of knowledge, little and often, little and often, will really, really build up into you actually knowing quite a lot. So I've made you loads of multiple choice questions over on my website. And these are really, really low stakes revision. Now that kind of means if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to find out if you get all of these wrong. Um, and then you can just do retake quiz and see if you get more right the next time. Or go back to it a week later and see if you get more right that time that you do it that is the whole point behind me making these for you that you can do them as many times as you like and then hopefully get better and better and better because it does go through at the end and tell you what the right answers are so that you can say oh yeah that's where that is or that's the date that that happened so there is stuff for you to learn but it's in an active way so you're doing the questions but it's not a hugely high pressure way like a mock or doing a bit of homework that you have to hand into your teacher this is something that nobody but you will ever see plan your time around the things that you need to focus on so this is sorting out the difference between high priority and low priority subjects so if um you've been made to do a language as lots of schools will make you take a language but honestly you've got no real interest in following up languages further and you know i did um two sciences and two maths at a level i didn't need I did two languages at DCSA because I was a crazy person. Um, you, I didn't need any of my languages. So for me, my languages, my DT, my geography, they were like my low stake subjects. If I didn't pass any of those, it would have been the worst thing in the world. My high priority subjects are always going to be your English and maths because everyone needs those. And then for me, my other high priority subjects are my sciences because I knew that I needed those to get into six form. So I spent more time revising science and more time revising maths than I did French. Now I was good at science and maths so maybe I didn't need to spend more time revising those but I definitely 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 needed to get those grades whereas I didn't definitely 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 need to get my French grade or my German grade. So don't always spend the same amount of time revising on subjects. So when you come to do this knowledge checklist, if you can't find one for some of your low priority subjects, then that's kind of okay. We don't need to worry about that too much. Now, one of the most important things you need to do over this half term is just try and relax a bit. Um, go outside, it's still pretty nice and warm, so we don't have to dress up in our winter coats just yet. Um, but do try and prioritise time for your mental health. Definitely look after that. It's been a long um, term, half term at school and it's about to get dark and cold and miserable which kind of makes the next one a bit gloomy. Um, but guys please don't worry because I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>